Oh, yes. Welcome back, everyone. Today, I'm very excited to bring you a review for the new PowerCon exclusive Motu Origins Rulers of the Sun, Sun Man. That's a bit of a mouthful, so let me explain. 2021 PowerCon has come and gone, and there were a bevy of exclusive He-Man figures that were released during that PowerCon, and Sun Man was the last of those to be released. Now, you might notice I haven't reviewed the Faker yet, and that's because I haven't done the regular Faker, so I'm kind of holding off on him. But I see no reason not to go ahead and cover Sun Man now. That being said, if you've seen my reviews before, you know this goes. We're going to take a look at Sun Man's packaging, then we'll open it up. We'll check out his mini comic, and then we'll see Sunman himself. We'll check out his posability, his accessories, action features, all that stuff. Naturally, I'll do some group shots and comparisons today, and then at the end of the video, I'll give my final thoughts. So Sunman comes in an outer box, very similar to most of the other Paracon exclusives from this past year, where it's a plain cardboard box, and it's done up in a line art pencil style, where the print actually even looks like it's, you know, graphite pencil so that's really neat so this really cool image of sun man on the front sporting a head design which is in my opinion much cooler than the actual toy itself just being honest you can see the mattel symbol here in the corner you can see this little message here it says adult collector so thank you for validating me mattel <laughs> it's not for kids mom and then of course up here we have the rulers of the sun logo with sun man right here you get the same thing on top sides are blank and then on the back we get this really cool dynamic shot of Sun Man where it looks like he's flying through the air you can get like little whoosh effects going on behind him he's got his um it's like a lance or a spear right I forget I think it's a lance he's got his wings kind of flaring out there very cool shot really great artwork and then once again you get the Sun Man logo so that's it for the outer packaging now let's see what's inside and here is our inner packaging. Now this is very interesting and it surprised me. Uh, so it looks, from first glance, like a blister card, but it's not really. So if we flip this around, you can see the back of it's open here, right? First of all, you get this little thing, which is neat. This Motu Collector Certificate of Authenticity. So that's pretty cool. Look how shiny it is. So you get Motu Collectors X Sunman. It's actually hard to read with all those lights. It says, this certifies that your Masters of the Universe Origins Rulers of the Sun Sunman action figure was created by the collaborative efforts uh, of designers and creatives at Mattel and the creator of Sunman. Is it Ela Eason or Isla Eason? I'm not sure. I'm going to say Isla, but I'm not sure. Apologize, Miss Eason. Um, then, oh, it's got her signature right there. That's her, This is really nice. This is a really neat little extra. And he's the only one that comes with this out of all the Paracon exclusives. So, really cool. And then you get this. So what this looks like, what this appears to be, I thought it was going to be a mini comic. It looks like it's just a full-on comic book. Look at that. It just slides right out of there. Let's see. So the outside. Okay. Okay. I see. So it's on like cardstock, like a really thick cardstock. So, you know, the front of this right here just looks like the back of a blister card. Just like it would. It's got his name on there. His title, The Greatest Hero of Them All. Yada yada, but then you open it up, and first of all, you get a picture of Pigface, the main villain from Sun Man, right there, looking around suspiciously. And then you get this big old comic right here, which is really cool. And it looks like it shows the origin of Pigface and like how Sun Man turned him into a pig monster, and how Sun Man's going on to, you know, go to Eternia and fight Skeletor and Hordak. Really cool, really cool. A little more fancy than a regular mini comic. And then on the back, we get this really nice artwork of Sun Man, which is taken right from the um, that pencil line art thing. So this is like the full color version. Very nice. Awesome uh, light effects and everything on there. So this is neat, right? So that just slides out. So this you don't have to destroy this like you would a normal blister card where you like, you know, peel it away and all that and mess it up. So you can just pull this out now. And then you get Sun Man. And you can see he comes with uh, an optional head, which personally I like more than what he comes with. I, the head, so apparently uh, Miss Eason designed Sun Man's head after her son's, which, you know, makes sense because he does have a very innocent, juvenile look about him. And, you know, in that context, I, I get why she did it. 
know, that way her son can actually imagine himself as a superhero, which is really cool. But it also makes for not a very intimidating looking hero, you know what I mean? <laughs> he looks like a child, you know, with a man's body. Personally, I prefer the second head they did for Sun Man, like the flat top one, which I'm very disappointed that this one doesn't come with that. I thought that the alternate head, because this is a deluxe release, unlike the retail version, would be that head, like the variant head. It's not. Instead, Mattel is releasing that variant head as its own standalone figure in a future wave, kind of like they did with the vintage head He-Man and Skeletor. And at first I was like, why would they do that? And then I remembered, Mattel likes money. <laughs> right? If they included that head with this release, you wouldn't want to buy the other Sun Man. So, of course, they're going to dangle you along with a little carrot on a stick and make you have to buy at least two. Uh, you don't necessarily have to buy the uh, standalone one that's coming out in Wave 8 because this guy is, you know, pretty much that but better in every way. Unless you're just a real completionist. But if you do want that other vintage head, you are going to have to pony up the dough for another Sun Man toy. So that's pretty annoying in my opinion. Um, so he does come with this cool shield right here. Look how shiny he is too. Look at all the like, metallic paint effects on here. And then on the back, you get a big old like energy effect, which I didn't even realize he came with. And then you get his lance, which is red. Okay, I thought it was yellow, but no, it's red. It's, it's right. And then two uh, optional hands, which look like old closed fist hands. Yeah. So, you know, he's got the pretty, pretty standard loadout for a deluxe figure from Motu. Um, interestingly, it's still on like a normal size, you know, quote unquote card back or, you know, fake card back. So they really just kind of like crammed everything behind him, but it works. I, I think it's a really nice package. And I love the fact that I don't have to destroy his packaging. Like you just slide them on out and then you can just kind of put everything back together and it's totally fine. You can keep it as a collectible item. And personally, I think I'm gonna do just that, at least for the time being. So it'll be the same thing I did with the Evil Horde set where that packaging was just so awesome and out there that it'd be a shame to get rid of it. So I really appreciate that. I like it when you know you can get an exclusive package that you can actually maintain and hold on to because it is something special. Like a convention exclusive is kind of a big deal amongst collectors. So to me, greatly appreciated. I think the execution on all this packaging is excellent. Now we get to see the toy out of its packaging. So we have Sunman right here. I've gone and swapped his fists ahead of time, so he's currently using the closed fists right here. And I do that because the more open hands are gonna be needed to you know, wield his accessories. Uh, speaking of accessories, so he has his lance, he has his shield, he has this cool energy effect that goes on the lance, and then he's got his more, I guess, you know, mid-battle head. Not angry per se, more like a perplexed looking head, which honestly I think works a lot better than just the very kind of wide-eyed, innocent default head. I get why it is the way it is, but it doesn't make for a very exciting superhero toy. It just looks like a small child on steroids, so... You know, I just, it doesn't really work for me in a Master of the Universe line. Oh, naturally he's also got his little wing thing going on the neck there, which I'm not sure how many of you saw it, but they've actually unveiled a Masterverse version of Sun Man that's coming. So he's gonna be, you know, much more realistically proportioned. He's gonna have a head that looks, you know, more like an adult, and he's gonna have actual wings instead of like a wing cape around his neck. So I think that's a big improvement. Like the wing cape thing is a little weird. I'm not sure why they went that route. It was just, you know, hard to manufacture actual wings at the time, but it's a little funny looking. Looks more like he's just wearing a cape and it's being blown back by the wind. And now getting a close look at the figure itself, it's, you know, your pretty standard figure. I would say the upper arms, uh, the legs, and the torso are probably all just a He-Man recolor. Uh, the pelvic area, like the loincloth area, is completely different. The boots are obviously very, very different. Instead of being, um, you know, something that looks like it's made of hide, it's more modern looking boots. It's got like stars on it. He's got these custom bracers. And then he's got the new chest piece, which uh, I think just sits right on top of the chest. You have to take the head off to remove it, but it'll plunk right down there. The wings, I think you can force them off by like pushing them apart, but you'll probably put a lot of stress right here in the middle. So I would recommend taking the head off if you're gonna remove the wings. Uh, I, I would not recommend trying to squeeze them around the neck because you'll probably snap it right here. So don't do that. And then you got the head, which is an all new head. Very innocent looking, you know, all that. Let's go ahead and swap it. That's how I get the wings off right there. 
Give them the more battle ready head. It's like blends in a little better with their Motu toys. There we go. That's what I'm talking about. Now some man's ready to fight. So he looks pretty cool like this. You know, he can put up his dukes if you want him to. Or just, you know, monologue dramatically, something like that. Let's go ahead and swap him back to his standard hands. So we can check out the weapons. Get that in there. Pop that one off. And then good for this. Right, the shield technically can go in either hand, but naturally it's going to go in this hand. So just, you know, the handle goes inside his fingers here, which I don't really like to hold on to it very well. And then it just kind of snaps onto his arm right above the bracer. Now, it does block his elbow articulation a bit, so you have to, you can only bend his elbow about that much with the shield on, so just be aware of that. And then the lance, you just put in the other hand. Looks pretty cool. It's very nice on its own, and this is pretty much what you'd get with the standard version, uh, the one that comes in Wave 8. Uh, doesn't have a, a blast effect or anything, but luckily this one does. So we can go ahead, in fact, let me raise my camera up just a bit. This is gonna make him quite a bit taller. You take this, you just slide it right over the tip right here. And now he's got this, and he actually holds it up quite well despite all the weight. That looks cool. He looks like he is ready to lay down some justice right there. I like this. Really spruces the figure up and makes him a lot more serious looking than just the default without, you know, the energy burning with the more happy-go-lucky face. I really like this. I don't know if I'm going to display him with the alternate head because with my personal Origins collection, I like to keep the figures as vintage looking as possible to emulate like an actual vintage He-Man collection. I'll probably swap the head back, even though I'm not a fan of it, just so it looks like, you know, the original toy. But I have to say, in this case, I'm very tempted just to leave it like this, because I like it. I think it looks a lot better. And he also looks, you know, about 20 years older <laughs> than the other head, so. I don't know. I'm a little more torn on this one than I normally would be. Now we get our mandatory group shot with the other major hero from this toy line. Of course, it's He-Man. And these two make quite the pair. Uh, I, I, I look at them kind of in the same vein that I would look at like He-Man and She-Ra. Two very different styles of character from two very different worlds. You know, He-Man is your, your Conan the Barbarian type. She-Ra would be your you know magical warrior princess. And they get this guy who's a little bit more comic book superhero in appearance. So they're each doing their own thing. And I think the contrasts actually make them you know very interesting team-ups. Because they're obviously similarities. I mean, they're built like exactly the same. They share a lot of parts with each other, but they strike very different visages. And I think that's important for helping Sunman, you know, stand on his own as his, you know, own hero. He's not just another member of Eternia or something. He's very much cut from a different cloth than He-Man, but he still works, right? They still look like they could exist in the same universe. And I think that's important. Um, so I really like this. Now, obviously, you know, Sun Man's a bit flashier. He's got all the shiny armor, the boots, the flaming lance, all that, the wings. You know, He-Man is a bit more savage warrior type. And it's a shame that these two have never crossed over in, you know, media fiction, at least not yet. Now, obviously, you know, in the 80s, there was a very real reason for that. Sun Man and his toy line were basically just a He-Man knockoff, so they would not have appeared in, you know, any sort of media together. But now, you know, we're getting mini comics with them to help promote the toys. Who's to say that there won't be some He-Man episodes in the future where Sun Man makes an appearance? Or maybe Sun Man gets his own spin-off show now, since he's, you know, officially endorsed by Mattel. They have deep pockets. We'll have to see what happens there. But it would be interesting to see these two fighting side by side against, you know, Skeletor, Pig Face, both of them. And if that is something that's coming in our future, I very much look forward to it. And this completes our look at the new PowerCon Sunman. I have to say the presentation on this guy was fantastic. I thought we were just getting a normal blister card type packaging. And when I got it open to realize it's something you can meticulously take apart and that the actual card back is a big old fold out comic. It's got that certificate of authenticity. I love it. It's something that looks plain, but ends up being very, very special. 
So right off the bat, I was impressed. And we get to the figure itself, and I think it's really cool. Even though I'm not crazy about the original head design, it's still an excellent recreation of the original head design, so I have to give it props for that. Uh, I love the, the shiny paint apps that they've you know put all over his armor, on the red and everything. I do have some concerns about it because the uh, shiny paint there, it has a bit of a tacky quality to it when you feel it, almost like nail polish. And I do worry that over time that could start to come off, especially on the bottoms of his feet, because the bottoms of his feet are painted that same red. So I can very much see myself in a few years pulling him off a shelf and him leaving behind like red footprints on the shelf. So just be aware it's something that might happen. I don't know, it's just pure speculation on my part. Uh, but yeah, I mean, everything that comes with the shield is really nice. The lance is a really cool weapon. And then it gets really fleshed out by this like sun blaze effect going on here, which even though the effect's all yellow, having that red core inside gives it like almost an orange to yellow gradient, which I think really helps sell this, you know, fire motif. Really awesome. The wings are weird. He would look a lot cooler if he actually had wings coming off his back piece, but they wanted to keep it true to the original, so I respect that. And overall, I think he's a really cool toy. I think, you know, for a deluxe uh, Motu Origins type figure, he's a really neat one. I love the effects. I love everything about this guy. So I'm a huge fan of this. Now, at this point, if you don't already have one, it's probably too late to get one for anything less than a small fortune. Uh, luckily, there is the Wave 8 standalone, like, core assortment figure that is, you know, currently showing up. Or, no, that one got delayed, didn't it? So, I think it's showing up in June, if I remember right. Um, for some reason, it got pushed back, like, past the rest of Wave 8. Uh, so, if you do manage to track one down in stores, it's a good substitute. It comes with most of the stuff this guy comes with. He just has some extras, and I believe the shiny paint is exclusive to him. I think that's, like, a premium paint job for this release. The other one will probably have just flatter colors or just bare plastic on the red. I'm not sure. Um, but it'll be a decent substitute. But I'm happy I have this one. I don't personally see a reason for me to get the Wave 8 figure. I think this one does everything that it does, plus more. So I'm good with this. I may end up picking up the alternate head one that's supposedly coming in a future wave. Just so I can get that, that flat top look that's a little more grown up looking and cool. And you know, then... If you have both, you can always swap the heads too and you know give this one the preferred head if you want. A lot of possibilities there. So I very much like this. I recommend it to anyone that's interested in getting it. Just be aware that at this point in the game, anyone you're gonna be buying it from is looking to turn a big profit on it. The figure wasn't cheap to begin with, being a PowerCon exclusive, so I would I would wager I mean at least a hundred dollars, I'm guessing you're gonna have to pay for this. But if you have deep pockets and you want a really cool interpretation of Sun Man, probably the best version we're going to get, I would say go for it. I think this guy's really good. Of course, that is just my opinion on this figure. So now I want to know what you all think of it. Do you think this is uh, that this came out really well? Do you think it could have been better in some way? Are you very pleased with it? Are you interested in Sun Man as a character? He's not a Motu original character. He's kind of, you know, out there. So is he not you know, something you're interested in, or do you think he's a really cool novelty or a nice little bit of history? Any and all feedback is always welcome in the comments section. If you enjoyed this review, make sure to toss it a like. Let YouTube know you want to see more stuff like this. If you do want to see more like this, make sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell so you always get a heads up when I post something new. I thank you for joining me for this look at the all-new Masters of the Universe Origins PowerCon exclusive Deluxe Sun Man. With all that said, I will see you next time.